for baseball, the Canada Baseball Day, and a lot featured in the pregame show. And as Jamie mentioned, Pat, Blue Jays are trying to salvage this final game against the Angels. And if they're going to do that, they're going to have to shut down one of their longtime nemesis, the great center fielder, Mike Trout. You know, Buck, he's one of those uh, types of players who's a once in a generational type of player for a team's history. They don't come along very often and when they do you have to appreciate them and he's just getting started. He's already fourth on the Los Angeles Angels career home run list. He's played five full seasons in the major leagues. He's been the MVP twice three second place finishes. He is some kind of ball player. Cesar Valdez will take the mound here this afternoon. The field level action cam is brought to you by the Samsung Galaxy S8. Unbox your phone. Couldn't ask for a better day to play a baseball game. 28 degrees. It's a bit breezy. 22 mile an hour, 22 kilometer an hour winds as we are set to play. Take a look at the lineup for Mike Sosha's Angels. They're trying to sweep the series. Mike Trout, as we mentioned, has always been tough on the Blue Jays, and that's the case this season. 10 for 27 for the year. And then how about the streak that Anthony Simmons is on. He's got an eight game hit streak gaudy numbers 14 for 31 with four extra base hits. Simmons has hit 377 in the month of July. They will get Cesar Valdez Valdez 10th game third start of the season for the Blue Jays. There are his numbers with Oakland and Toronto Valdez was claimed off waivers from the Athletics on May the 5th after four outings there he has a 225 earned run average with the Blue Jays in five games including one start he was superb Tuesday winning for the first time since May the 10th of 2010 one run just five hits in six innings a full seven years between his first and second major league win his fastball was good and he really had a good change up in his last start really kept the Athletics off balance defensively a couple of different looks in the field Kevin Pilar is not in center excuse me Ezekiel Carrera isn't right instead of Bautista and the new second baseman making his Blue Jays defensive debut Rob Ref Schneider signed as an outfielder started playing second base regularly in 2013 gets the start this afternoon his first start for the Blue Jays since coming over from the New York Yankees so Ref Schneider utility player Russell Martin making his ninth start at third base as Donaldson and Bautista just given the day off. Bautista has appeared in every game for the Blue Jays to this point this season. You know Escobar the former Blue Jay spent parts of three seasons with the Jays. Here's the first pitch of the game it's in there for a strike and we are underway. Escobar in a series three for seven he scored a run he's got a pair of doubles get used to that from Valdez he throws a lot of strikes doesn't overpower you but he's always around the plate his manager John Gibbons says you know what he has pitched well enough I like what he's doing out there I'm going to just keep running him out there quickly ahead 0 and 2 three pitch strikeout. Now this drop down through that changeup. He does that very effectively. He'll give you many different looks from the mound this afternoon. In different arm angles and different speeds. There's the changeup. Fastball, slider, changeup to finish Escobar very quickly here in the first inning. Now this had four strikeouts in his outing last time out against Oakland. So here is Mike Trout. He has reached base in 14 straight games against the Blue Jays. 15. He didn't waste any time. He jumped on that first pitch and rips it to left field. Well, he saw the sequence that he Escobar got fastball slider change up. He wasn't going to wait around at all. Blue Jays haven't been able to contain him. He's hit 300 against the Blue Jays in his career. 27 RBIs in 43 games. Trout waits no time picking up the game's first hit. So now you got to keep him close at first. He has only been caught once this season. He has 12 stolen bases. Albert Pujols, he's on one of the worst stretches of his career. He is 0 for his last 24. Quick throw by Valdez. Pujols 
Like I say, it's been a real struggle for him. His longest over of his career, over 26, happened last year. Trout with a decent lead, not running. You know, and he's still Albert Pujols, though. When it's all said and done, this guy's going to be going into the Hall of Fame like everybody else today, the three players who are going in today. He's got great power into the gaps. He's hit a couple of balls hard to center field in this series. Now, this did a nice job of holding that ball, freezing Trout at first. Obviously, Pujols always prone to ground into a double play, so you would think Trout's going to try to get a jump here at first. It's the thing about Trout. Uh, if you don't want to pitch to him, he's got the ability to steal bases. You mentioned he's 12 for 13 this season. Not running. Two and one now. He doesn't even appear that he wants to go the first three pitches to Pujols. The Angels have very limited experience against Valdez. Of course, he hasn't pitched much in the majors. Two and one with Trout at first, one out. Not going. Fly ball into center and deep. Pilar running at the track, at the wall. This ball is gone. Albert Pujols snaps an 0 for 24 with a first inning two run home run. And like I said, it's Albert Pujols. So you just keep throwing him out there and he will figure it out because he's been doing it forever. Another home run. He's up over 600 for his career. Connected for a 600 home run, a grand slam on June 3rd. 606 now. Valdez challenges him, and Pujols makes him pay. We are down on the field today, and it's very windy, and it seemed like the ball's going to be jumping today. Pujols shows that off with a first inning homer. Well, once you see Pilar turning and racing toward the center field wall, you have a pretty bad feeling that ball's not going to stay in the yard. Special day here on Sunday, especially for this lady. How about that? She leans over and catches it in her baseball cap. The two guys whiffed on it. <laughs> she caught it with the cap that away. That's pretty awesome. Cole Calhoun. A ball and a strike on Calhoun. Calhoun's 232 for the season, 13 homers and 45 driven in. He's just two for nine in this series. Now that's making his third start of the season, his fifth big league start. Little chopper, Valdez gets off the mound and he made a nice play. That ball kind of caught on the heel of his glove and he just caressed it and was able to hold on. Finished off that play in his last start. He used that change up about 40% of the time to really baffle the Oakland A's throwing six innings. Fastball change up has been really good for him. It's basically those two pitches. Here's what you were talking about the heel of the glove. It goes. Off the glove, he cresses it to his chest and says, You know what? I better finish this throw over to first base. Here is the shortstop, Anderson Simmons, batting 301 for the season. Simmons leads Major League shortstops with 116 hits. He's had a good road trip. He's 9 for 21 on the road trip through Cleveland and here in Toronto. Simmons has an eight game hit streak. And he's just worn out the Blue Jays over the last couple of years of a 350 hitter. 
starting to show more power. You saw the 11 home runs, 11 home runs, second most of his career. He had 17 when he was a rookie in 2014. Off the plate, three and one now. The Angels have won 13 of the last 17 games they've played here at Rogers Center. They have owned the Blue Jays, playing them here on the road. Three, one, two outs. Now it's a full count. Luis Valbuena making the first start of the series. First two starters for the Jays, left-handers, Hap and Liriano. Here's the payoff pitch. Hit in the air, and that's going to go into the seats. You know, everybody talks about the gloves of and uh, the glove of Andleton Simmons, but how about the bat this year? It's catching up with the glove. AL ranks, he's first in hits with 116. Total bases, he's fourth. He's hitting over 300. Fourth best among shortstops in the American League. Doubles, he's got some pop. 11 home runs and 24 doubles. Martin gets tested. No problem at all. Russell Martin throws out Simmons, but the Angels jump out to a 2-0 lead. Albert Pujols snaps an 0-for-24 skid with a two-run home run. And a lucky lady in center catches the souvenir in her hat. Lead in the top half of the first as Ezekiel Career would lead things off. Take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays trying to salvage the final game of this three game series. They swept the Oakland A's in a four game series, lost the first two to the Angels, and Carrera out at the top of the order since the All Star break, seven for 21. Three doubles and four runs scored, and then down in the three spot. Dustin Smoke just keeps on rolling, seven for 21 in the homestand, a couple of home runs and five RBIs. His average has crept up every single month of the season. He's not showing any signs of slacking off. None whatsoever. Blue Jays get Jesse Chavez today. Chavez making his 22nd appearance, 21st start. He's now in his 10th major league season in the big leagues. His first with the Angels. He's 5 and 10 with a 535 earned run average. Allowed a season high seven runs on five hits in four walks. And just two thirds of his two and a third innings, the shortest outing in his last start against Cleveland. Former Blue Jays had two separate stints with Toronto. He throws the first pitch outside to Ezekiel Carrera. Carrera having a nice season, 291, a career high seven home runs. It's this one high into the air. This has got a chance of his day's fair, and it's gone. Number eight. Well, Pat, you said the ball was flying here today. So far, it's true. Two for two. A top of an inning and a bottom of an inning, and we've got two home runs. Zeke keeps adding on to his career high. He had six home runs last year with the Blue Jays. That's number eight this season. A deep drive, I'm telling you, he got all of that one. 
Boy, what a way to answer a two run top half of the inning. First batter of the bottom of the first goes deep. You know, it's been the problem for Chavez in his career the long ball, fastball right down Broadway, about belt high over the middle of the plate, and Carrera gets all of it. Talk to him about he's been a former Blue Jays, had two separate stints with the club, 2012 and then 39 games last year with the Jays, so they know all about him, and they haven't treated him very well. Blue Jays. Have beaten them four times. Breaking ball hit toward the shortstop Simmons. Martin grounds up. Zeke showing off some power deep to right field. The only question was, was it going to hook foul? But it stayed mm. true right down that right field line. Nice looking swing as his day starts off. With a bang. Now you mentioned Jesse Chavez and his problems with the home run. He did not allow a home run on June 27th at Dodgers Stadium, and that snapped the franchise record of 13 consecutive games allowing a home run. So the long ball has always been a concern. He has now surrendered 25 home runs this season. And here's another home run candidate in Justin Smoke. Breaking ball. Ball and a strike to Smokey. Chavez has now surrendered three home runs to the Blue Jays this season. Gave up a three run home run to Jose Bautista in the 13th inning of that extra inning game in Anaheim. And then he came back and made the start on Monday. It was a wraparound Monday series, and he gave up a home run to Russell Martin. So the Carrera home run this afternoon, the third that the Blue Jays have hit off Jesse Chavez. Five career games against the Blue Jays. He's one and four with an ERA over six. Two and two to smoke. Well, he consistently lays off that tough breaking ball in the dirt. Kenris Morales had a rough start to this series. He's 0 for 8 with four strikeouts. Full count. Boy, he got to a pretty good pitch. Even that swing right there, Pat, that was a very controlled swing. He saw the ball very well, just went down and kind of protected the strike zone. Last year, he would have got up there, saw it, and then tried to hit it nine miles, but he's got two strikes, a little bit more under control. Look at the head and the legs taken down in the strike zone to go get it. His uh, consistency has been impressive this whole season. Every at bat, grinding it out, working it. Staying with his plan and has worked out, out for him. Takes ball four inside. A one hour walk to smoke. Defensively, the Angels committed two errors yesterday. They had committed just one error in their previous 20 games. They kicked it around a bit yesterday. Simmons has been great at shortstop. Maldonado starts for the 85th time behind the plate. Yeah, very strong up the middle. We've talked about Maldonado. We've talked about Simmons and now Mike Trout. Gold Glover in center field can do it all. We talk about his offense all the time, but he's a pretty darn good outfielder also. Here is Morales. Six years with the Angels. He fouls that first pitch off. Morales, as we mentioned in this series, 0 for 8 with four strikeouts. He's got to do something special here on this date five years ago when he was with the Angels, became the third player in Major League history to homer from each side of the plate in the same inning. He did that against Texas, hit a two run homer and a grand slam in the same inning. He had two homers, one left handed, one right handed. Now there's that breaking ball and that's the pitch that he has to lay off of and he's got the steady diet of those breaking balls down and in. 2 1 ball game. Albert Pujols homered in the top half of the inning Ezekiel Carrera homered in the bottom of the inning.
Off speed pitch fouls it off. One and two now. The infield defense basically a double play depth. Caleb Cowart playing the pool. Simmons almost directly behind the bag at second. Keep the ball away. Morales has been hot. Hitting some big home runs for the Blue Jays lately. I think that curveball is going to be very important for Jesse Chavez. He can throw the fastball and the cutter consistently for strikes. He's got to be able to get that curveball over to be effective. Steve Pierce standing on deck. Here's the one two to Morales. Fastball gets him. Chavez strikes out Morales with the fastball first strikeout for the right hand. What you're going to get from Jesse Chavez is you're going to get a little bit of everything. Take a look at the pie how it's split up. Fastball about a third of the time he can cut the fastball he throws that about 28 percent of the time change up slider curveball just a little bit of everything his curveball is his best pitch that's the one that they're hitting the lowest average against just 174 against the curveball. Steve Pierce goes after the first pitch all those other pitches that we showed he's very good at putting it where he needs to at times he can get a little inconsistent with his curveball. Matter we mentioned this is his 85th start. He does a terrific job behind the plate. Mike Sosha puts a high premium on good defensive catching, and Maldonado has earned the right to play every day. He gives a terrific target. He gives his signals with conviction, and then he really presents a very positive target with his mid. And if you try and steal against him, he's got the third best average in throwing out base runners in the American League. So you want to play for the Los Angeles Angels at catcher, you better be pretty good because Mike Sosha was a pretty good catcher in his playing days. You can see Sosha, the manager, controls the running game, passing the signs on to Maldonado. It's a fly ball. Calhoun, the right fielder. Looking up into that bright sun takes the catch back. The innings get one back. Ezekiel Carrera hits his eighth home run of the season, leading off the bottom of the first. That's his 19th career homer. Back to Rogers Center. Well, it wouldn't be Canada Baseball Day without catching up with Canadian Russell Martin. Now, Martin grew up playing baseball in Chelsea, Quebec, home to what is now known as Russell Martin Field. Now, Martin told me that as a young boy, he always dreamed of putting on an Expos cap and playing at Olympic Stadium. That was the ultimate goal. But that wearing a Blue Jays cap is not too shabby, he says with a smile, because he's still representing Canada's team. Now, I asked Martin why he believes there are more Canadians in the majors enjoying success despite the geographic challenges. He told me the level of training and coaching keeps improving, but above all, the number of former major leaguers and other professional players 
returning to their communities and teaching the youth of this country. That buck is the type of knowledge, Martin says, is invaluable to the growth of baseball in Canada. Well, that's a great point, Hazel, and I think we have seen that consistently by some of the great Canadians that have played in the majors coming back after their playing days to make an impact on youth baseball and help these young players develop. Luis Valbuena takes the first pitch strike. One of those former major league players, Chris Rietzma, is holding a wiffle ball tournament today out west, and that's what we mean about the former major leaguers getting involved and just kind of validating that you know what Canadians can play and we're here to help you develop. I think that's sure. cool. And the Blue Jays are doing their part with all their camps. The Honda Super Camps that they have going on in the summertime. Hey anytime there's a camp here at Rogers Center it is packed with kids who love the game of baseball. Luis Valbuena hits it into center and that's going to drop in front of Kevin Pilar who gives ground to play it on the hop. A leadoff single. Well, we talk about the infusion of talent into the major leagues, and there are currently five major leaguers from Canada playing in the big leagues now, including Russell Martin and Joey Votto. And some of those guys are super duper stars like Joey Votto. James Paxton is putting together a heck of a year. Pavetta out in Philadelphia, he has had his moments this year. Nick yeah. Pavetta is from Victoria, B.C. And he's had some good games for the Phillies in his rookie season. Here's Ben Ver Revere. Revere, I thought, got the biggest hit in that ninth inning comeback yesterday with the double off of Osuna into the corner in right field. All the former Blue Jays stuck it to their ex team. Cliff it, Pennington was involved as well. He had a sacrifice fly that put him ahead. Oh, and one to Revere with Bob Winner at first, and Revere hits it to Mark, makes a nice play. They go to second for one. What a good play by Russell Martin, showing off his defensive skills. Saves an extra base hit for Cesar Valdez. Gets the lead runner at second and keeps the double play in order. You and I have talked to Russell after his days playing third base, and we say, Russell, what do you think? He goes, Hey, I can play there. I'm an athlete, and I can do it. And he does it too, right there. He is in guarding against the bunt, so he takes it on the backhand on the short hop, picks it clean, and gets that leadoff base runner. Keep the double play in order. That's a nice little play. So now the catcher Martin Maldonado batting with Revere at first. You got to keep your eye on Ben Revere. Revere has 11 stolen bases in 15 attempts. I think this situation cries out for a stolen base attempt. Try to keep the pressure on the Blue Jays. Valdez is thinking the same thing. Yeah, you got to keep him close. But Maldonado, the catcher, in a double play situation, you would think they at least a start to run him. Revere played 56 games for the Blue Jays back in 2015. He really got off to a slow start when he first joined the Blue Jays, and they're all kind of scratching their heads, saying, "Man, this guy is just overmatched." And then he ended up hitting 319, <laughs> and they couldn't get him out. Remember that he started uh, at the bottom of the lineup and got his feet wet in the American League, and then, boy, he got hot and couldn't get him out. They put him in that leadoff spot, and he ignited a lot of rallies for the Jays. Outside, two and zero. Oh. Revere came to the Blue Jays on July 31st in 2015, and Blue Jays did a heck of a job of fortifying their team that year. DeMarlo Hale, he controls the running game, passing his signs on to Miguel Montero. Not running. 
Cut on and missed. The Angels have a 2 1 lead. We're in the top of the second. Three and one now. I think it's a good time to start the runner here. Three you know and one. What? Neither Revere nor Trout looked like they wanted to run when they got the first base. I don't know why. Be a good day to take off. You take off now three and one. If it's a ball, it's ball four. You just coast in the second base. If you're Mike Sosa, you start the runner, extra base hit. You're probably going to get a fastball here. There he goes. Foul straight back. Revere is running on that 3 1 pitch, but it was foul back, and he'll go back to first. Well, if you're running 3 1, you got to be running 3 and 2. You guess that you're going to get a fastball. Maldonado did get a fastball, he just fouled it back. 3 and 2, 1 out. Montero has caught just one of eight. Base stealer since joining the Blue Jays. There goes Revere, strike out, throw to second. In time, Angel Hernandez, the umpire is second, calling Revere out. The Angels are going to look at it as Mike Sosha has come out to the top step. It looked like the tag was high on the back of Revere. Question is to whether or not he got a hand on the base before the tag was applied. Montero's been working with John Gibbons and trying to get that ball out of his glove a little bit quicker. And it doesn't look like they're going to challenge it as Revere is thrown out. Boy, nice job by Ref Snyder to get the tag on him quickly. That ends the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the second. 2 1 LA. Leading off the second inning for the Blue Jays will be catcher Miguel Montero. Montero earlier this week was out early with John Gibbons, the former catcher, working on his release, working on his throws down to second base. Gibby was saying he wanted to get his footwork ironed out and trying to get that ball in the air a little bit quicker, and it has worked out for him. Came out earlier to work on stuff, and this is the result of that work. Change up. Tough pitch to throw him, but he comes up with his good footwork this time and throws a ball hard to second base to get his second base runner. You know, you come out during the week, put the time in. We saw that with Josh Donaldson working out at third base, and it's paying off for the Blue Jays defensively. It's amazing how practice helps you get better. So Montero, he also had a big hit yesterday, a home run. Montero's first home run as a Blue Jay. This has popped into the seats out of play. Montero hit that home run in the sixth inning to 
and tie it at 3-3. Three, three. They made it a 5-3 score. Unfortunately, the Blue Jays would give up three in the top of the ninth and lose 6-5. That home run could have made a winner out of Francisco Liriano. Really good. Bouncing ball, big hop for that winner. He goes to the bag. One away. Hit a home run with any project this season. Home Hardware, proud sponsor of the Toronto Blue Jays. It is Canada Baseball Day, and the WestJet Flight Deck has the two World Series trophies out there, so the fans can go to the flight deck, have their picture taken with them. The WestJet Flight Deck has become quite a destination for fans. It's an open-air area where fans can leave their seats in the stadium, go out there, and get a different perspective of the game. You don't need a ticket to go out there, do you? There's not a separate ticket for that area. Right. So if you yep. have a ticket in your seats here, you can just wander out there for a couple of innings and check out what's going on today. Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame has articles on display. It is Hall of Fame Sunday, of course, and in Cooperstown, they are having the celebration. Brian Goins singles up the middle. A one-out single for Goins. Well, the Blue Jays made an announcement today that Troy Tulowitzki had ligament damage after he sprained his ankle, and that's not very good news, but you would expect something like that because of the severity of the injury. They'll give us further information later on, but that's unfortunate. Tulowitzki took an awkward step, landed on the heel of C.J. Crone, the first baseman, and that initiated that rolling over of his ankle, and then when he came down, he came down in front of the base and just Ex exaggerated the injury. It was very, very unfortunate. Blue Jays playing hit and run. Yeah, it, he hits Crone's leg first and then hits the side of the bag, trying to beat out this ball back through the middle, and then really rolls it over. We had a shot of him going slow motion. It didn't show right there. Right away, he grabbed his ankle and he said, that, That's some ligament problems right there. You and I have been around the game long enough to know when you roll your ankle that far, that much, that some ligaments are going to be involved. Yeah, it's unfortunate for sure. Tulowitzki missed 31 games early in the season, actually suffered the injury against the Angels out in Anaheim in April. Had a hamstring problem trying to advance on a wild pitch. Cost him 31 games, and it'll be a while before he's back after this injury. Kevin Pillar with a 1 1 count. You know, Buck, I, I love how the Blue Jays played hit and run there on the first pitch. Owen's got the single back through the middle. And you got Kevin Pillar struggling just a little bit offensively. When you start that runner, really makes that batter hone in on that baseball just a little bit longer. Fortunately, he fouled off that pitch from Jesse Chavez. Bob Adano likes to throw. He's very active behind home plate. Would not be surprised again to see the Blue Jays put the hit and run again. Now that it's gone to two and one. Maldonado told you he's thrown out the third most in the American League. Third highest throwing out caught stealing percentage throws behind going to that time. Put it on again. Stay aggressive. Mike Sosha again calling for the throw over. Remember Sosha the manager controls a running game defensively. You will have a series of signs and then he'll get a series of numbers. Owens not running. Pilar swings and misses. Two and two now. Kevin Pilar batting two forty two for the season. Full count. Got to run him right here just to. Create some movement on the infield. Anderson Simmons, the shortstop, over to talk to Cowart, the second baseman, about the coverage. 
with the possibility of Goins breaking. Yeah, breaking ball away. He'll probably have a shortstop cover. Fly ball to right. Calhoun running out of room. Did he catch it? Nope, he didn't catch it, and he banged up against the wall. The ball was slicing away from him, and there's not much room in foul territory down there. Just a couple of feet, and to make matters worse, it looked like Calhoun banged his leg or his foot up against the wall. Angels look like they're going to talk about this one to see if there's some fan interference if a fan reached out onto the playing field. Ted Barrett's a crew chief. He's the first base umpire, and he informed Sosha the ball was over the seats, but they're going to look at it anyway and watch where that fan is. He reached out over the field, but it looked like he missed it, and the ball may have been over the stands anyway. No contact by the fan. It looked like it hit Calhoun's glove. But there's not much room, and he knew he was running out of room, but he had a chance to make that catch. So Pilar, there goes Goins, and Pilar hits it on the ground. Coward gets it, knocks it down. Goins does the right thing. He goes first to third. Good job by Goins, picking up on the fact the second baseman, if he did get the ball, was going to have but one play, and he'd have to scramble to throw it the first. And he'd be in no position to get that runner. That's why you start that runner to create some holes on the infield, breaking ball away. Pitch away from Pilar doesn't try and pull and watch the shortstop's going to cover on this throw. Ball into the right side. Cowart, the second baseman, knocks it down. He has no chance, even if he comes up with that, no chance to get Goins, who ran with his head up, looked behind him to see where the ball was. Always running with your head up, thinking 90 more feet, and it pays off. So Rob Ref Snyder will get his first at bat with the Blue Jays. Runners at the corners, one out. Ref Snyder was in AAA with the Yankees when he was informed he had been dealt to the Blue Jays. His numbers this season in 21 games. He came into a game yesterday as a pinch runner. Ref Snyder is 26 years old. He was drafted by the Yankees out of the University of Arizona in 2012. He's played parts of three seasons with New York, a total of 95 ball games. These are his career numbers. Signed as an outfielder, good take there to get into a fastball hitting count. Signed as an outfielder. Just moved to second base in 2013. His reputation is as a hitter. He hasn't shown it yet this year in the big leagues. Some inconsistent playing time. But he's got a nice little short swing. Two thousand and fourteen in the minors, double A, triple A with New York. He had three eighteen. Two and one. Bounce it out of play. Now it's two and two. We spoke to Rob this morning about his reaction. He said Ryan Cashman really kept him up to date, saying, you know what, we got some younger players here and probably don't have many opportunities for you. So at the time, he also said there's several AL East teams that are interested in acquiring you. And he was happy to come to the Blue Jays. Two and two. Goins had a leadoff single, or excuse me, a one out single. Goes first to third on the Pilar, hit and run base hit to right. Angels think that Pilar, the Blue Jays' best base stealer, might be off on this 2 2 pitch. There he goes. Ball is hit in the air to right. And that's going to be an easy double play. As Pilar was running, Ref Snyder flies out to right. Calhoun picks up another outfield assist. And that's how the end of the second inning comes to an end.
Pilar's on the run, and anytime they say you take off, this ball is hit on the line, just keep running. You're going to be out anyway, and Coward, or excuse me, Calhoun throws back to first for the double play. Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all new Honda Civic Type R, like no Honda you've ever seen. They were lined up early today to get into Rogers Center on this Canada Baseball Day. Russell Martin replica jersey was given away. Another sellout crowd. It will be the 14th sellout crowd of the season as the Blue Jays continue to pack them in here. Carrera is not going to be able to cut this one off. Caleb Coward is headed for a second. He's making the turn. Here's the relay throw from Ruff Snyder. It is just not in time. A strong throw on the cutoff and relay from Rob Ruff Schneider. But Coward slides in safely ahead of the throw. That's his first triple of the season. Coward is going to get the most looks at second base after they let go Nick Franklin this week. So Coward's not wasting any time, takes advantage of the Playing opportunities had a couple of hits the other day and now he's going to leg out the triple the Blue Jays had a chance to get him. the throw was just a little bit high from Ref Snyder it was strong but when Russell had to go up to get it by the time he came down Coward's going to leg it out that I wanted to become a consistent hitter when they sent him down to triple A he's going to be their regular second baseman from here to the end of the season. So he ends up at third with the leadoff triple. Back to the top of the order. You know, Escobar struck out his first time up. This time he drills it. That's over the head and off the top of the wall. Steve Pierce plays it back in, and Escobar is going to have to hurry. Boy, he was Cadillacing it out of the box, and he looks like he's upset with Alfredo Griffin, the first base coach. I don't know why, because maybe he said, hey, you got to let me know it's going to be close. But he didn't run out of the box. He thought it was a home run, and then he had to scramble to slide in ahead of the throw from Pierce. I don't know why he'd be upset with Alfredo. You hit the ball, you got to run as fast as you can. It's going to go right off the top of the wall. Drive it in the third run of the afternoon for the Angels. Pierce plays it off the wall, hits the cutoff man. Blue Jays have a shot to get him. It's just a little bit too late. Escobar. With the double, thought the ball was going to go out of the park. Then he's got to run hard to beat the throw into second. And then he turns around and points to the first base coach and says, Hey, you got to help me out. Help you out. You got to run. That's 1,496 hits for Escobar now. Mike Trout's got a single. He's scored a run already. Three to one, Angels. A 
Hard to believe that everything that Mike Trout has already accomplished in this game of baseball. He's only 25 years old. He'll turn 26 next week, first week of August, but still just 25 years old. Five full seasons in the big leagues. He's never finished further down than second in the MVP race. Yeah, think about that. First or second, he's already won two MVP awards. He's a six time All Star. Twice he's won the All Star Game MVP award, and now John Gibbons must have heard us. He said, you know what, I've seen enough. I'm going to put him on. So Trout, given the intentional pass, that he is certainly a generational player. And he missed significant time six weeks after he ruptured a thumb ligament, had surgery. And was having his best season. You mentioned all the MVP awards and finishing second in the MVP awards. His first half before he was injured was his best in his career. Albert Pujols homered to dead center in the first. His 606th career home run. 15th of the season. Nobody out. You know Albert Pujols is now 37 years old but early in his career he was Mike Trout. He did the same things that Trout did early in his career. He won rookie of the year was a silver slugger in 2001 when he came up with the Cardinals at 21 years old. Second year he finished second MVP. He was second in his third year third in his fourth year and won the MVP award in his fifth year. That's what Mike Trout's yeah, doing. Mike Trout's doing the same thing power hitter who hits 350. Look at some of those batting averages his first couple of years in the big leagues. 329, 314, 359, 331, 330. It was ridiculous what he put up the first few years in St. Louis. For his career in St. Louis, over the span of 11 years, he hit 328. Power and production. He and uh, Miguel Cabrera remind me of the same kind of guys. They're big and they're strong and they've hit a lot of home runs, driving a lot of runs, but they can hit. They're not power hitters with holes in their swings. They have ideas, drive the ball all over the ballpark. That home run that he hit in the first inning has given him now 1,878 RBIs. Valdez with the one two pitch way outside good stab by Montero two and two now still nobody out Caleb Cowett started it with a triple to the wall in right center Escobar doubled off the top of the wall in left and Trout was given the intentional walk. Broke his back. He's going to need another piece of wood. Pujols, he hit his 600th home run, and he has been carrying around these commemorative bats. And Miguel Montero had one of them, and it's really pretty impressive. He's got 600 on it, and it acknowledges the date he hit the home run, and it's a signature Albert Pujols bat. I'd like to get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Put them in my trophy case. Two and two. Past Russell Martin in the left field. Escobar is being waved around third. And Pujols is two for two with three RBIs. And that RBI right there, he told you, will give him now 1,879, tying him with Cap Anson all time, 11th all time in RBIs. To put that in perspective, there have only been three players ever in the history of the game to have over 2,000 RBIs. Albert Pujols might be the fourth. 
Rips that one by a diving. Russell Martin. Russell can't come up with it. Base hit in the left field. And another run. Pools stay back on that changeup. 2,000 RBIs. Hank Garrett's number one, of course, with 2297. Then Babe Ruth and A-Rod. The only players ever to have 2,000 RBIs in their career. You got to be good, and you have to be good for a long time. Still nobody out. Pete Walker with a quick visit to the mound. Nobody's moving around in the Blue Jays bullpen. Four to one Angels. The Blue Jays will go to Chicago to take on the White Sox and the White Sox continue to wheel and deal. They have just traded Melky Cabrera to the Kansas City Royals. Melky Cabrera the switch hitting outfitter will bolster the Royals offense. He has played in Kansas City in the past. So wheeling and dealing continuing as the trade deadline is tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern time. By the time we get there, we might not recognize the White Sox. They have certainly turned over their ball club. Todd Frazier, David Robertson, no longer there. Now Melky Cabrera. Dan Jennings. They have unloaded some of those veterans. How about Quintana? Well, Jose Quintana. He was the first to go. And since they have made that trade, the Cubs have turned it on. That was the first of the major deals during this July trading period. And boy, he's had a positive impact on the rest of his teammates. He has thrown well, and everybody else has raised their game. And they're still talking about getting another starter. That's what they'd like to do, maybe another reliever. Cole Calhoun behind 0 and 2. Aaron Loop, first up for the Blue Jays here this afternoon, starts to limber up. Valdez has thrown 45 pitches. Nobody out here in the third, and the Angels have a 4 1 lead. One and two, ball inside. Trouts at second, Pujols at first. Pujols is two for two after an 0 for 24. First two hits of this road trip. Just a matter of time, isn't it? Good hitters like that. He'll figure it out. Mike Sosha's team came into this series last in the American League and run scored. Ground ball. Ref Snyder throws high to Goins, and he comes off the bag. Goins turned around. Angel Hernandez calls him for. Coming off the bag, Pujols is safe at second. Goins asked for the Blue Jays to look at him. Ref Snyder gave Goins a high feed, and Ryan came across the bag and thought about going to first, but chose not to make the throw. And now they're going to check on whether or not he maintained contact with the bag. Let's see on this replay. It is a high throw, and Goins thought better of it. Right away, Angel Hernandez said, no, you were off the base, and I think he's right. Yep, it certainly looked like he was off the base when he made the catch, and Ted Barrett ran all the way to the dugout, and the Blue Jays changed their mind, had a second look at the replay, so all hands are safe, nobody out. Yeah, there's choice for Calhoun. Trout's at third, Pujols at second, Calhoun at first, and the red-hot Anderson Simmons steps in. Still nobody out. Valbuena, a left-handed hitter, is on deck. That's probably who Loop is getting ready for. Blue Jays will trade a run for a couple of outs. It's only the third inning. They can't play the infield in. They're going to play the infield back. Hope that they get a ground ball. A couple of 
ouch and stop the bleeding. Simmons hasn't really performed well with the bases loaded just hitting 212 for his career. Now that's a different story on this pitch off the base of the wall Trout's in the score. Here comes Pujols right behind him. The throw goes to second. No one was covering as he Angels have jumped all over Cesar Valdez here in the third inning Simmons with a two run double and that's going to be the end of the day for the Blue Jays riding. Started off bad in that first inning single home run. They got a double play to end the second inning and just hasn't been able to get anybody out here in the third inning. Calhoun went from first to third and he really cruised into third base like he might have pulled something. He's walking off the field now with the trainer. So Calhoun may be done. Cesar Valdez is done. Here comes Aaron Loop to face Luis Valbuena and the Angels have scored four here in the third. Welcome to Canada Baseball Day presented by Rogers as we are in the time of the third inning no outs as Cesar Valdez has been knocked out of this game two plus six batters he's not retired a batter here in the third inning and Aaron Luke comes out of the bullpen to try to cool this angel team off 46th time that Aaron has come out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays he's two and two of the 482 earned run average he's done a good job of him. Stranding inherited runners 20 one of the 24 runners that he has inherited he has stranded he's going to have to do it again with a couple of runners on base including one pinch runner. Pinch runner at third is Shane Robinson running for Cole Calhoun. I think we might have an idea what the problem is with Calhoun. Calhoun went first to third on the Simmons double but this is the play earlier in the game watch his foot as it slams into the wall trying to make a catch that right foot hit hard against the base of that wall and that may be the root of his problem and why he's left this game knee or toe both of them hit pretty hard against that low wall down the right field line. Luis Valbuena has homered in three of his last six games. Smoke steps on the bag. Robinson holds his ground. Valbuena is retired. Nice play by Smoke at first. Anderson Simmons, we mentioned he came into this with an eight game hit streak. This swing extends it to nine. It's going to drive in a couple of more runs for Simmons. Best hitting shortstop, at least by the numbers in the American League. He leads a lot of categories. Hustles in with another extra base hit. That's three of them this inning. On that play, Calhoun went first to third and then walked off the field. 
So the infield is in now with one out and Ben Revere the batter. Mention Revere joined the Blue Jays in 2015 and turned out to be a heck of a leadoff guy. Then he carried that momentum into the postseason and hit the ball well in the division series. Against Texas, he hit 304, scored three runs in the five games against the Rangers. What a spark plug at the top of that lineup. Getting hits. Something gave something the Blue Jays really at half speed at the top of their lineup. Had a couple of stolen bases in that division series with the Blue Jays during the regular season in 15. He had seven steals. Played 56 games for the Jays. Chases that breaking ball and fouls it up. Robinson, the runner at third base, is going on contact, so the infield's got to be aware of that. Revere swinging a hot bat over the last week. One and two. Infield has seen the base runner at third react on contact, so they've got to be on their toes. Four runs in this inning. It's a 6 1 lead for the Angels. Nice block by Montero. Montero caught yesterday and hit a home run, had a couple of walks. So with Donaldson out, Bautista out of the lineup, Martin's at third. Carrera started in right. Base hit through the drawn in infield as Robinson comes in to score. Simmons bluffs it around and now Pierce throws home and Revere alertly moves into second. So Pierce threw it over Martin. He was trying to hit the cutoff man, but when he airmailed Martin, Revere takes off and goes to second. Heads up base running. First of all, Simmons was trying to decoy. Pierce like he was going to go. Froze initially on that line drive with the infield in. Watch him at second base. He's got a big lead. Let's the ball get by him. Now he's going to try and deke the throw like he's going to go. Pierce sees that and not even close over the head of the cutoff man and outside the dirt area around home plate. Then Revere's going to take advantage of that to move up. Sinair on Pierce says. Simmons comes around and then Pearson hesitates, double clutches, and then when he throws it, he airmails Martin all the way to the plate, and it's wide of home. And on the play, Revere goes to second. Watch out. And then Revere is going to take advantage of that. You got to run with your heads up to see what's going on. He singles into left field. He looks over his shoulder to see if Simmons has taken off, reads the throw, and with his speed, that's easy to get in the scoring position. One and one count inside. Two balls and a strike to the Angels catcher. Bother now the ninth man to bat this inning. Caleb Coward started it with a leadoff triple. Still only one out, so the infield has to come in again. Runs in this inning. Carrot triple, Escobar double, Trout was walked, and Pujols had an RBI single. Anderson Simmons with a two run double.
driven into center as ball is caught and Simmons made a base running mistake. He broke on contact. Should have scored on that fly yes, ball yeah. to center. He broke on contact and the ball hung up there. And he just couldn't get back to third base to tag up and score on a sack fly. As a base runner at third base, anything in the air, you see the flight of the baseball. If it's in the air, just go back and tag. Ball's hit, he takes one, two and a half steps, and by that time, he can't get back. And then thinks otherwise, said, you know what, I can't score. I don't want to run into an out. No, nope, you got to go back on contact, anything in the air, and make sure you can score. So that caused Maldonado an RBI. Now there are two outs. This is the guy that started it all, Caleb Coward. Howard hit the triple batting left handed against Valdez. Batting right handed against Luke now. 2015 and 2016, Coward hit well in triple A, and then he struggled when he came to the big leagues. Says, you know what? I went back down to triple A this year, felt good all year, and that's what I wanted to do to try to get consistent as a player, hoping that it transitions into the major leagues. That, that final step from Triple A to the big leagues is probably the biggest step. Loops ahead, a ball and two strikes. He strikes out, kind of that ends the inning, but the Angels score five runs, send ten men to the plate. They knock Cesar Valdez out of the game, and the Blue Jays trail 7 1 as they're set to bat in the bottom of the third. Every Sunday home game, the Toronto Blue Jays salute the Canadian Armed Forces, and today they honor Sergeant Trevor Williamson. He's an aerospace control operator with the Royal Canadian Air Force, and he served at home and abroad, notably four years in Alaska, as well as deploying to the Middle East in 2015. Sergeant Trevor Williamson, today's Sunday salute on this Canada Baseball Day. Thank you very much, Hazel, as we want to congratulate Sean Wilhelmson, as the Blue Jays always do on the Sunday. The Sunday salute to the military men and women. Shane Robinson came in the game as a pinch runner for Cole Calhoun. He takes over in right field. The Blue Jays are charged with one error. That was the ref Snyder error on the throw to second that pulled Goins off the bag. Pierce was not charged with an error on that high throw. Ezekiel Carrera homered in his first at bat. His eighth home run of the season. Lines this one into center, and Trout's going to play it on a hop. 
Guerrero's two for two. Beauty Tone, Canada's color experts, available exclusively at home hardware and building center locations. So Carrera gets the start in right field in place of Jose Bautista, and he's homered in single. He likes what he sees from Jesse Chavez. Hasn't been able to get him out yet. Blue Jays have a long way to go, so you just got to get base runners. Think about those base runners. Carrera two for two. He's now four for eight for his career against Jesse Chavez. Russell Martin grounded out to shortstop his first timer. One and one. Chavez took the loss against the Blue Jays, pitching in relief in extra innings in the 13th inning on April 21st. First game of a four game series. Then he came back on Monday, the final game of that series, as a starter and picked up the win. He pitched six innings. In that second appearance in that four game series against the Blue Jays and beat them. And had his shortest outing of the season in his last start. That was against Cleveland. Got some runs to work with this afternoon. A cutter off the plate as Martin goes after it. It's two and two. Jesse walked four batters in that outing in just two and a third innings against Cleveland five days ago. Today you can afford now with that lead to be a little bit more aggressive. Off the plate outside. What you don't want to do especially with a guy like this sitting on deck with a six run lead is start nibbling at the corners. Start walking guys giving up hits. The next thing you know someone pops it out of here and Blue Jays are right back in it. Runner is moving. That's a foul ball as Carrera was running on the full count pitch. The Honda Checkered Flag event is back. It's the best time to find a Honda you'll love. Well, it's a special day in Expo's history as Tim Raines goes into the Hall of Fame, joined his former teammate Andre Dawson. In the Hall of Fame. Jeff Bagwell, Pudge Rodriguez, Tim Raines, the three players inducted into the Hall of Fame. John Sherholtz, the great GM of the Atlanta Braves, and the former commissioner Bud Selig also going into the Hall of Fame for their contributions to baseball. What a day. It's such a great day of celebration around the world of baseball. There goes Carrera. Martin singles into left field. Carrera will hustle over to third. Revere goes to second on the throw. First and third. Well, there's a lot of baseball left in this game for sure. Just in the third inning. Blue Jays look like they are hitting in seeing Chavez. That's their fifth hit already. Martin's hit fastball 3 2 is going to send Carrera all the way to third base. He was off on the pitch. And he knows once the ball is hit to the left fielder, Revere's got to lay back. He's going to lay back because the ball's going to get to him quickly. Carrera takes advantage of that, goes first to third. Not even an attempt by Revere. So Blue Jays have something going again. Russell Martin. At first, as smoke goes out of the first pitch. The last three Sundays, including this game today, the Blue Jays have been outscored 41 to 3. Here. Here in Toronto. They lost to the Astros 19 to 1, lost to the Red Sox 15 to 1. They trail 7 to 1 now to the Angels. Gonna have to rally to get back in this game. But as we said, they have plenty of time. Plenty of time, and they've got plenty of firepower in the lineup. With smoke, smoke pops one here. Pops one here, and it's seven to four. Ah. 
high breaking ball. Smoke has 29 home runs and 69 RBIs. He walked his first time up. Pick one out. With three more RBIs with one swing. Smoke's having some good cuts. Jesse Chavez had two separate stints playing for the Blue Jays. He was selected off waivers by the Jays from Kansas City in October of 2011. Smoke hits a looping pop up down the left field line. That's going to drop. Bounces high. Revere's throw to third. Not in time. Good job by Russell Martin. As he hustles around second, slides head first into third, and Smoke picks up the RBI, his 70th. Keep that line moving. Chavez throws a pretty decent pitch to Smoke, but he's just had some good swings. That's a pitch down and away. Stays with it. That will play Carrera. And on the high bounce, Russell Martin reads it. He goes first to third on a base hit the left field. That's two this inning. You got to respect Smoke's power, so you got to play deep, and that allows that ball to drop in. And it's the Blue Jays' turn to get back into the game. Absolutely, Martin at third, Smoke at first. Kendris Morales struck out his first time up. He is due to come up with a big hit. Pops this one up high in the air. Left fielder Ben Revere. Martin's going to break for home, and the throw is not in time. Good job by Russell Martin. Blue Jays know Ben Revere doesn't have a strong arm. So Martin scores on the sack fly. And it's a 7 3 game. Ben's had three outfield assists this year. Teams trying to take advantage of that. The ball carried initially off the bat. It looked like it was going to be a pop up into the infield and it carries to the outfield. Blue Jays know, like you said, they know Revere. And once that ball hits the turf, look at it just eat it up. It ended up a three hopper. One, two, three to the catcher, and that allows Martin to score. Good job by Russell going first to third and then scoring on that shallow sack fly. Steve Pierce. Find out his first time up. Smoke still at first. 7 3 game. Still just one out. Chavez has surrendered 25 home runs this season, including the first inning home run to Carrera. Their umpires are looking at each other, trying to decide what to do, and the Blue Jays are saying, maybe we got to take a look at this one. I thought that ball hit the facing of that stands be of the, above the fence in center. So do I. You know, the umpires were rotating with runners on base, and nobody gave a sign, usually the home run sign or the safe sign, like the ball was not going to go out. John Gibbons is saying, hey, I want to take a look at this one. The umpires are all going to come in and talk about this. Nope, hit the fence. Hit the fence. Looks like it hit that facing on the seats, but indeed it hit the fence, and it will be a double. So the umpires saw that it hit high on the fence in center. They're and all talking about it. Now they're talking about it, and if they do go to the replay, it won't be long, but they're going to look at the replay. I think this is on the, the umpires. The umpires weren't really sure. That's the crew chief, Ted Barrett. He was at first base. Angel Hernandez was at second base. 
in the rotation, there was not an umpire out there to see where the ball hit. And they looked at each other. Like, did you see that? And the other one said, I'm not sure. Did you see it? So yeah. they're just going to get video replay. In their defense, the shadows of the roof cut across there in center, and the ball kind of passes through those shadows. It strikes the top of the fence right on that TD sign in center field. And oftentimes you'll hear see it hit that facing and go straight down. You're right. Now Ted Barrett is calling Charles Nagy back because Nagy was out there and they asked for the review and Barrett says you got to leave the field while we review this play and now he has afforded him the opportunity to come out and talk to his pitcher. So it'll not be a charge visit a second charge visit. That's right. Sure. Right. So he had to go back while they take the look took a look at it. And just like in the top of the inning with the Angels mounted a rally with nobody out. They just kept the ball moving. The Blue Jays keep the ball moving here. They've got one out. They've got two runs in. They've got two runners in scoring position. A chance to cut into this lead. Well, we mentioned Jesse Chavez. He is winless in his last eight starts. He is 0-4 personally in his ERA in July. Closing in on seven. It was high in May, higher in June by a run, and higher in July by another run. And the Blue Jays are taking advantage of that. They, they know these numbers too. They're down seven to one. They know that they can get back into this game if they keep having good at bats. Big opportunity for Miguel Montero, second and third, one out. He takes the first pitch strike. Chavez. Coming into this game had allowed 29 earned runs in his previous 38 and the third innings. Ground ball that's going to score a run. Smoke comes in to score. Montero is retired. And the Blue Jays have scored three runs in the bottom of the third. It's now seven to four. Blake Parker listening up for the Angels. So Montero picks up an RBI. On the play, Pierce goes to third as Smoke comes in. Now there are two outs for Ryan Goins. Goins had a sharp single to center his first time up. How about a two out RBI? Blue Jays have been missing that on this homestand, those clutch hits. Goins has done a nice job of delivering big hits. His batting average is just 209, but he's gotten some big hits. It's this one right to the second baseman. That'll end the inning, but the Blue Jays cut into the Angels' lead. They scored three runs against Jesse Chavez. And now the Blue Jays trail by three.
Enjoying those comfy green chairs are this month's winners of the TD Coverage Zone Contest. Welcome, everybody. And after 40 seasons, how would you rank the Blue Jays' 40 greatest players? Go to sportsnet.ca to select your top 40 list. Bye. Thank you very much, Hazel. And that will be an impressive list when it's all compiled the 40 best players in Blue Jays franchise history. Another good crowd on hand. Looks like it's going to be the 14th sellout of the season for the Blue Jays. The Russell Martin red replica jerseys a giveaway this afternoon. I hope some of those are coming up here. I've got some grad kids who are big Russell Martin fans. Would love to present them one of those red replica jerseys. 7 4 ball game. It's just the fourth inning. There have been 11 runs scored on 15 hits. And we have played just three innings. You know, Escobar had an RBI double his last time up. He now has 1,496 career hits. Closing in on 1500 hits and he would become the 11th native of Cuba to amass 1500 big league hits. It's an impressive list of Cuban born players led by Rafael Palmero who has 3020 career hits. Tony Perez Bert Campaneris Tony Taylor. Minnie Minoso. Tony Oliva Jose Cardinal Jose Canseco. Leo Cardenas and Cookie Rojas. Cookie Rojas, my bench coach, my teammate in Kansas City, former manager of the Angels. My first coach in the big leagues with the Cubs and the father of the Angels. Television broadcaster Victor Rojas. Escobar is called out on strikes. That's the first out of the inning. Oops, second strike out. Zeros. That's what the bullpen needs. Loop has been getting a lot of right-handed batters with fastballs this season. This time he paints it down. Escobar thought it was low. The only guy that matters, the home plate umpire Sean Barber, thought it was high enough. Mike Trout had a base hit his first time up. He was given a intentional walk second time up. Escobar has struck out twice and had an RBI double been scored. Trout has now reached base in 15 straight games against the Blue Jays. Over the previous 14 games, he had a 439 average. It's going to go up with a base hit and a walk. Multiple hits in nine of his last 13 against the Jays, hitting over 400. He's got a very simple approach at the plate. He lifts up his front leg, puts it back down, and he's so strong and he's so quick. His swing is short. He can wait a long time on the ball. 19 home runs. The Trout has 19 home runs as you see Mike Bolsinger loosening up. He's already fourth on the career home run list for the Angels. Nineteen home runs and two hundred and fourteen at bats coming into this game. If he hits another one, it's a milestone home run for Trout. He hits another one, it would be his 20th home run. He would join Alex Rodriguez, Tony Conigliero, and Mickey Mantle. As there's another base hit for Trout. He is two for two with a walk. A perfect afternoon for Mike Trout. Six. But the 20th home run would be six seasons with 20 or more home runs prior to their age 26 <laughs> campaign. Power and, power and speed you get that from Mike Trout the super slow slow mo replay is powered by the Samsung QLED the next innovation in TV there's that simple approach I was talking about pick up the front leg set it right back down ah. 
with that 20 home run season. Once he connects for that home run, he will also be just the second player ever with six 20 home run, 10 stolen base seasons before their age 25 season is over. Albert Pujols had a good start to his day. He is homered and single, driven in three and scored two. Loop is ahead, 0 and 2. Strikes out. This 4K broadcast is brought to you by Samsung QLED TV. Experience Canada's team in all the colors of the game with the next innovation in TV. Been a beautiful weekend for baseball here in Rogers Center. It was 28 degrees at the start of play, and there is quite a comfortable breeze going through Rogers Center. Shane Robinson ended the game as a pinch runner in the third inning, as Cole Calhoun went first to third on the double by Simmons and then came out of the ball game. Some waves at that pitch. Luke was dealing with that fastball. Yeah, they're not picking it up. He's had some funky swings here this inning against this fastball. Fouls that one into the seats. That's a base hit into left field. Trout's going first to third, and he moves in there easily on the throw to third. Robinson goes to second base. There's no shot at all getting Mike Trout. Just runs too well. So it'll be a single for Robinson, and he goes to second on the throw. Check that. They give him a double. But that's going to be it for Aaron Loop. Simmons is the batter. Bolsinger is ready in the bullpen. The Blue Jays are making a pitching change. Mike Bolsinger, first appearance since coming off the DL.
Kansas City reportedly paying two point five million dollars to the White Sox for that trade and Kansas City and their long win streak come to an end last night where they walk off win. Sandy Leon scored on an infield play as he hustled in from third base and made a tricky slide around Drew Butera. So Mike Bolsinger coming off the DL. This is the first appearance that Bolsinger will have made. He left, went on the DL with a knee issue. He never had any arm problems. Anderson Simmons one for two. Goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Long run for Carrera. He's going to get there. Nice play by the right fielder. That ends the inning and strands a couple of base runners. It keeps it a three run game. Fans on Sunday, August 13th, join us for Super Jays Day. We're calling all of our super fans down to the ballpark to enjoy some activities and fun photo opportunities in the WestJet flight deck. The first 20,000 in attendance will receive a pair of Blue Jays high socks when the Jays host the Pittsburgh Pirates at 107 Eastern. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. Sounds like a great event, chance to come down and show how much of a big Blue Jays fan you are. Well, the Blue Jays are within striking distance now. At one point, they trailed seven to one, but they got three runs in the bottom of the third. Now it's a seven four game. So Mike Bolsinger stranded a pair of Aaron Loops base runners when he came in the game. Making it that four run game. Blue Jays sent seven batters to the plate last inning against Jesse Chavez. Score those runs. That first guy on, get the second guy on, and this could be a different ball game. Kevin Pilar with a 1 1 count. Pilar had an infield hit, hit a ball on the ground to the right side, and Caleb Cowart knocked down, didn't have a play, so Pilar got the base hit. He's back in the second. Two balls and two strikes. Outside. Of course, the Yankees are playing Tampa Bay in New York. Jacob Faria against Jordan Montgomery. That's the pitching matchup. Lar pops it in the seats. The Yankees have won the first three games of the series. Yankees have scored 36 runs, hit 13 home runs in their six-game winning streak. How about Brett Gardner? Has he got some big hits for them, Mr. Right? Walkoff? Huh? A couple of them this week. And a walkoff hit, home run on Thursday, and a walkoff hit on Saturday. Lar hits this one in the air. That's getting down quickly and oh, what an effort by Robertson. I think Shane Robinson thought that 
Trout was going to have a play and he had to hustle and then had to leave his feet to make the catch. Hey, I was watching Mike Trout on that and he gave a glance over to the right fielder like hey I can't get to that one it's going to slice back to you so don't give up on it. Watch Trout shading Pilar to right field the balls hit he doesn't get a very good jump he's just looking at his right fielder saying it's yours all the way and Shane Robinson takes away extra bases with a nice play off the bat of Pilar. Yeah Mike Trout didn't react very quickly when that ball was hit and I don't know if he saw it. But Shane Robinson is there makes a heck of a play to save extra bases. This is Rob Ruff Snyder. Ref Snyder lined out to the right fielder who turned it into a double play. It's off the end of the bat. Easy play for a well, winner. Two up, two down here in the fourth. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by the Samsung QLED, the next innovation in TV. I mentioned the Yankees playing Tampa Bay. New York has won six in a row and eight of the last ten, and they have leapfrogged over the Boston Red Sox in the first place in the AL East. Boston has dropped a half a game behind. Tampa Bay has lost a lot of ground lately as the Rays have gone from being three games up on a wild card spot to two and a half games back. Eight out of ten. They're going in the opposite direction. How about the Cleveland Indians? Nine in a row. For the tribe. They won all games on a seven game homestand and they won the first two games out on the road. How about the way they won yesterday? Bases loaded, hit by a pitch. Brandon Geyer, that's his trademark. Got hit by the pitch with the bases loaded. One and two on Ezekiel Carrera. He's had a great start to his afternoon. A home run, a single. He's scored two and driven in a run. This time he strikes out. Jesse Chavez for the first time today retires the side in order. We'll go to the fifth. Angels have a 7 4 lead. Now, time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell with Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Welcome back to Rogers Center on Canada Baseball Day presented by Rogers. It is a gorgeous afternoon here and that is a great shot from yesterday at Cooperstown. Former Expo teammates Andre Dawson in the Hall of Fame and now he has been joined by his teammate Tim Raines. The third Expo to go into the Hall of Fame. Gary Carter, Hawk Dawson and now Tim Raines. So congratulations to Rock. Known him a long time. Saw him when he was a young player down in the Florida State League. Started off as a second baseman. 
a 294 career hitter with 2605 hits. But the signature for Reigns is stolen bases. He led the National League in stolen bases four straight seasons from 81 to 84. That's when the game was built on speed. I mean, every team had that leadoff hitter who could steal you 40, 50 bases. He played in big ballparks with a lot of astroturf. So you needed those fast players. Reigns won a batting title in. 1986 when he hit 334. He also led the league with an on base percentage of 413. So congratulations to that entire class but especially Tim Raines with the Canadian connection having played for the Montreal Expos for 13 seasons. Off the plate two and two. Mike Bolsinger has done a good job for the Blue Jays. He has started five games for them, given them some length and some spot starts. But his last four appearances before today were all relief outings, and they've needed some innings from him. He had a relief outing of five and a third innings three outings ago. That was against Houston. He has a connection as well with the Angels starter, Jesse Chavez. August 1st, 2016, he was traded from the Dodgers to the Blue Jays for Jesse Chavez. You mentioned his great work out of the pen as he's been able to give John Gibbons some extended innings of work. He's had to come into games like this that have been out of hand one way or another. And save some of those innings for the bullpen. He pitched three and two thirds innings at Detroit. Gave up three runs, five and a third against Houston. He loses the leadoff man here in the fifth. And John Gibbons looking out to the. Oh, actually, he's giving it to Ben Revere. That's what he's doing. Ben Revere, who had a base hit against Lucas last time. On. So now when it walks to start the inning Revere had an RBI single his last time up and that was against Aaron Loop. Singled the left field and then went to second on the throw home. By Steve Pierce. He shows bunt and the ball is high for ball one. To the bullpen for the Jays to hold the Angels in check from this point forward. Revere bunts it foul. It's like he is sacrificing. Yeah, it does. Looks like they're playing to add to their lead. Martin Maldonado is the next batter. The catcher has struck out twice so far today. Check that. He is flight out. One for two. Yeah, he was part of that big inning in the third inning when they sent 10 men to the plate. Coward ended up striking out to end that inning. Two and one, they might do something here. Then Revere can handle the bat. If they decide to play hit and run. Doesn't swing and miss very often. Not running. There's a strike right on the inside corner. Big pitch is a good curveball. 
tried to throw it to Valbueno three and two and missed with it. That's the pitch that he'll get his share of strikeouts with. Not afraid to throw it at any point in the count. Two balls and two strikes. We're in the top of the fifth. A foul ball. That ball right in on his hands as he's protecting that plate with two strikes. Ben's got a lot of movement in his swing, doesn't he? But he gets that bat head out. He came over here to the Blue Jays a couple of years ago and got off to a little bit of a rocky start and then turned it on and was a spark for this offense. He's battling with two strikes. Yeah, not a lot of swing and miss in that strike. Yeah, that swing. As they go for the strikeouts. Revere actually led the National League in hits in 2014. 184 hits. That led the NL. Hmm. When he first got the Blue Jays, you and I would sit here and watch the swing and go, man, this guy's overmatched. But boy, he figured it out. Broke his back. Ref Snyder to you. Goins back to first. Not in time. Revere legs it out as he beats out the return throw to first. Broken bat didn't get to the second baseman quite as quickly as the Blue Jays needed. Yeah, and just slow as that ball was hit. Too slow for them to turn it. Revere. Still has some decent speed as he hits the front part of that bag and easily beats the throw. Fielder's choice. Martin Maldonado, the catcher, is, 0, is 1 0 for 2 with a strikeout. One away. Ben Revere was thrown out trying to steal on a strike him out throw him out double play in the second. The Angels lead the American League in stolen bases coming into this game with 86. I thought Mike Sosha would incorporate that a little bit more. This afternoon. Just one attempt so far. Pulled foul. Past Ron Renicky, the third base coach. Ball in a strike. Bolsinger came out of the bullpen into fourth and got Anderson Simmons to fly out to right to India. He walked about when to start this inning. Ben Revere hit a ground ball but reaches as he stays out of the double play. He had six strikeouts in his last appearance against Boston. There goes the runner, cut on and missed. Strikeout, and ball gets away at second, and Revere is going to go to third. It's strike two on Maldonado. Hit and run was on, and that ball was in the dirt. It got away from Ref Snyder, and Goins chased it down, but by the time he picked it up, Revere was at third. Well, they do. Play some hit and run this time, trying to get something going. He makes it easily, then picks up the ball. So he can move over to third base. Now the infield once again has to come in. Got to shut down this run. Revere is now 12 for 16 in stolen bases this season. A ball and two strikes on the catcher. The infield in on the edge of the grass. Up and away. Mike got underneath that one. You can see him tap himself on the shoulder, say, That's my bad. I got underneath that breaking ball. He needs a strikeout.
Kept that ball inside and jams Maldonado. Seven to four, Angels lead it. They scored five runs in the third. Blue Jays countered that with three of their own in the bottom of the third. And that's where we stand now. With one out in the fifth. High pop into left field, not that deep. Revere tagging at third. Pierce makes the catch. Here's the throw to the plate. It's a good one, but the high bounce goes over the catcher. Revere slides in safely. The throw was on line, but Revere's speed, he simply outruns that throw, and the ball was bounced high over Montero. Yeah, and that's what speed can do for you. It can pick you up runs, a walk, a stolen base, an error, and then a short sacrifice fly into the outfield plate, your eighth run. Revere's going to go all the way. He's going to challenge Steve Pierce, and he does the right thing. Slides feet first as that ball hits the turf and bounces over Montero as he tries to get himself into position. Caleb Coward, the on-deck batter, signaling Revere to slide, and he slides underneath Montero. The ball bounced high over the catcher. So that's a big run for the Angels, their eighth run as Revere reached on the fielder's choice, stole second, went to third on the air, and scores on a sack fly. Speed. Speed. Manufacture runs all by yourself. Blue Jays have committed two errors this afternoon. It's out of play. Ben Revere has an impactful return to Rogers Center. Bosinger swipes at it. Ref Snyder cuts it in front of Goins in time. Howard looked like he thought he beat the throw. Alfredo Griffin, the first base coach, has suggested that the Angels look at it. And Dino Evil said, check it. So the umpires will go to the video and they will check out this play at first. Slowed down initially by Bolsinger. And then ref shot Snyder, who has shown a pretty strong arm at second base, hustles over there, and this is going to be an infield hit for Coward. Coward playing second base will be their second baseman the rest of the season. Looks like he's going to have another base hit. He tripled to start the rally in the third inning. He also struck out in that inning, and. That was a quick decision as he ends up with an infield single as he call on the field is overturned. So once again it'll be the leadoff man you know Escobar Escobar one for three. We've seen him now four times today Escobar it's only the fifth inning. He had five at bats in yesterday's game, five at bats in the game before that. Been on base seven times this series. Two walks yesterday. Two doubles and a walk on Friday. And he has doubled here this afternoon. He's turned into a pretty good hitter. Last couple of years, his Average has improved dramatically. Escobar, one of the third basemen with a higher batting average over the last two, actually three seasons, he's hit 301. Coward was off on the pitch, but it's fouled out of play, so he'll return to first. When Escobar first came up with Atlanta, he looked like he was going to be a power hitting shortstop. Hit 14 home runs early in his career in Atlanta. Not saying something in that old ballpark. He just hasn't been that type of power hitter that you thought you would see. 
when he was a younger player. Covers that outside pitch and stays alive. Yeah, Escobar's only had three seasons of double digit home runs, and the two of them came early in his career. 2008 he hit 10, 2009 he hit 14. In his first season with the Blue Jays, he hit four and a half a season. Then he hit 11 in his first full season with the Jays. Stays on that breaking ball. Martin at third. Throws him out and that ends the inning, but the Angels get a big run in the top of the fifth to make it 8 4. So the Blue Jays will send Russell Martin to the plate. He has singled and scored. Justin Smoke has an RBI single, and then Kendrick Morales. Big bats coming up for the Blue Jays. Follow Blue Jays baseball live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected to the game's best players all season long with game day. Live game video highlights, radio broadcasts, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Thank you very much, Hazel. A beautiful afternoon at the ballpark. Another full house here at Rogers Center, and they'd like to see their Blue Jays come back. The Jays trail by four. Martin Smoke and Morales for the Jays here in the bottom of the fifth. Jesse Chavez, the Angels starter, is winless in his last eight starts coming into this game. He has an 8 4 lead here as he tries to qualify for a win by completing this fifth inning. Blue Jays are going to try and break his heart, knock him out here so he cannot get the W. Two and one. That's a strike. Top of the show, we mentioned Josh Donaldson and Jose Bautista both just getting a day off. Blue Jays will play three games in Chicago Monday night Tuesday night Wednesday afternoon and then they'll have an off day on Thursday in Houston before picking things up on Friday. Jose has appeared in every Blue Jay game except this one today and he has a chance to get back in there today. Every game but one he has started he, he's played in every game. It was back in April John Givens gave him the start off. In that second game double header in St. Louis. He would come in to play third base in that game. Three and two Martin fouls off that pitch. Chavez keeping everything away from the Blue Jays third baseman. It's a piece of that breaking ball. 
Chavez not tempted to throw anything inside just to smoke has walked and single picked up an RBI and he scored a run. We've seen that a lot lately for pitchers just keeping the ball away from Blue Jay hitters. Martin with the leadoff walk here in the fifth. Hit a home run with any project this season. Home Hardware, proud sponsor of the Toronto Blue Jays. Been a gorgeous weekend here in Toronto. The weather's been spectacular. 28 degrees at the start of play today. The roof has been wide open all afternoon. Justin Smoke has walked and had an RBI single. He's 8 for 22 on the homestand. His average currently at 303. He's behind 0 2. Smoke with that single in the third has now tied his career high in hits. That was his 108th hit. Walking more this year. He's got 46 walks to go along with just 79 strikeouts. That'll make that batting average go up when you put the ball in play. With that base hit, he's up to 303. That's a fair ball. Now, Buena goes to second for one. Return throw in time. Right there, Anderson Simmons shows off that strong arm as he really. Cut it loose back to the first baseman, a rare 3 6 3 double play, and Smoke bounces into that double play. You know, that was a heads up play by Balbuena, the first baseman, who had an opportunity to touch the bag, but he said, you know what, let me get the out at second base first. At least I'll get that lead runner and keep the double play in order. But because he went there in the strong arm of Simmons, they get two. 45th start of the season for Valbuena at first. He has not committed an air there. So the leadoff walk is erased on the double play. Second double play turned by the Angels today. Kenvis Morales had a sack fly in the third. The center trout there at the wall and he's going to make the catch right up against the wall in center and Morales is retired Chavez is through five with the lead.
mentioned earlier that Miguel Montero received a signed Albert Pujols number 600 home run bat. Well, it turns out John Gibbons received one as well. Gibbons managed Pujols a year before he broke into the majors in the Arizona Fall League. Gibbons told me no one can ever predict the level of success one can have in the majors, but he knew deep down inside that Pujols was going to have one heck of a career. Gibbons said the bat is destined for his home in San Antonio. He says he's always admired Pujols, but he quickly joked that if he happened to fall on hard times, Buck, quote, you know I'm putting that thing on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that bat in uh, John's office. It is a beautiful souvenir and a commemorative bat. Howard was very generous in extending those wonderful gifts to Montero and to John Gibbons. Mike Trout takes the first pitch strength. Third youngest player of all time to win multiple MVP awards. Mike Trout. Only Hal Newhauser, and Johnny Bench on this Hall of Fame day have done that. Johnny Bench, uh, Hall of Famer, of course, and there's that conversation. Pudge Rodriguez goes in and everybody wants to know does Pudge Rodriguez become the best catcher in the Hall of Fame. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I think Johnny Bench is still the best catcher. Uh, that's that's where I think all catchers should be measured up to. I know he's won more gold gloves. Pudge has won more gold gloves than than Johnny Bench. But you're talking to the wrong guy about that Cincinnati guy. I grew up with that number five. Yep. Yeah, you can't can't go there. Chad with a one two count and pitches too high. Johnny Bench won his at 22 and 24 years old. Trout 25 he's won two. Breaking ball. Mike Trout thought it was outside, and you can see his reaction. That's the first out of the inning. Drive of the game brought to you by the Honda Checkered Flag event. Check out their all star lineup. Albert Pujols is going to step up in the first inning. He is one of the only player in Major League history to hit 30 more home runs in each of his first 12 seasons in the big leagues. That's 606 right there as he gets the Angels, their first two runs of the afternoon. It's also our drive of the game. Think about that 30 home runs, 12 consecutive seasons, your first 12 seasons in the big leagues. Yeah. He really took baseball by storm when he came up as a 21 year old with the Cardinals. And he's just hit another one. That high pitch into the second. Deck in left field Pujols a three hit game two home runs on the afternoon and he's driven in four. Remember he came into this game this afternoon 0 for his last 24. That is pretty much history. Yeah it only takes a day for you to forget about the slump he's been doing it a long time 16th home run of the season second today. And that was a long one. Pujols was 0 for the series in Cleveland. 0 for 15 and he had not had a hit in the first two games of this series. High pitch is hammered to the seats in left. He is 3 for 4. Scored three runs, driven in four runs. And the Angels have a 9 4 lead. That gives him four RBIs today. His career high RBIs in a game, seven. He did it twice. Seven RBIs in a ball game. This is number four, a solo home run to left field. We can still get to that fastball.
for Pujols that's his 56th multi home run game of his career 56 multi home run games 607 home runs I guess you got to mix in a few multi home runs. 56 huh? multi home run games I think that's more home runs that I ever hit in my whole big league career. <laughs> What a player, what a career. And on this day where we are honoring the Hall of Famers, five years after he retires, he'll be there. Martin goes to first in time, two away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. The Lancaster flying high above Rogers Center. Beautiful day to fly that's for sure. Blue Jays will fly to Chicago after this game. They Angels will go back home. They have an off day on Monday, and then the Philadelphia Phillies will come to town as the Angels will start an interleague series. Simmons with yet another hit. He's two for four this afternoon. With that, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Well, that's a great pickup, Jamie. Sergio Romo and Dan Jennings just joined Tampa Bay. It's a high fly ball to left. Pierce is there. Now, when is retired? That ends the inning, but Albert Pujols hits his second home run of the afternoon. And the Angels have a 9 4 lead. It is Canada Baseball Day presented by Rogers, and I thought it was appropriate we would check out one of the Vancouver Canadians out in the Northwest League. It's a first round pick of the 2017 draft. Logan Warman came out of North Carolina, and boy, he has gotten off to a great start to his professional career. Just 21 years old, a 385 batting average. He was drafted 22nd overall by the Blue Jays, and they really like what they see in him. He's a middle infielder. He's playing shortstop in college, and from what I hear about him, he can do everything. Uh, a baseball player. That's what you get from him. Just a guy who can just play the game of baseball. So good luck to him. Hopefully he's up here quick. Blake Parker, 50th game of the season for Parker, and he has been hot, red hot for this bullpen. He has allowed four and runs in his last 34 outings. Jesse Chavez in line for the win, going five innings, allows 
Four runs on seven hits. He was winless in his previous eight starts. He's in line for the win. Called strike on Pierce. It's one and one. Fastballs upstairs for ball two. The Blue Jays. A couple of different times had a chance to get a big hit and get right back in this thing. Big run for the Angels. A couple of solo runs in the fifth and sixth. The last run coming in on the pool hole's second home run of the afternoon. <laughs> two and two now to Pierce. Martin Maldonado had a sacrifice fly in the fifth inning. It's the eighth run, and Matt Dermody starts to loosen up for the Blue Jays. Here's doubled his last time up. Montero waits on deck. And an RBI ground out his last time up. Full count to Pierce. Detroit's leading Houston six to nothing, bottom of the sixth. Justin Verlander apparently received a standing ovation when he left the mound. After that top of the sixth, he's allowed no runs on five hits and struck out six. Of course, the speculation is there's a chance he's going to be traded. All reports indicate it would take a whopper of a deal to entice the Tigers to trade Justin Berlin. Hey, this is when your best poker face, I think, comes into to play right here. You're getting really close to the deadline. And some of your guys are pitching well, some of them are not. And you got to really hold out. If you want to ask for a certain amount back, you just have to hold out to that last minute and see who breaks first. Good job by Pierce as he checks his swing on that close pitch and takes ball four. Eight pitch at bat right there from Pierce to open up the sixth inning. Lake Parker was a position player at the University of Arkansas. Really didn't hit much, so the Cubs drafted him, made him a pitcher. He spent some time in the major leagues with different organizations. The Angels claimed him off waivers from the Brewers. Miguel Montero, the catcher, 0 for 2. A ball in the dirt. Parker spent three seasons with the Cubs. Parts of three seasons. He was up and down. Then he pitched part of the 16 season in Seattle and part of the season with the Yankees. We've seen him pitch against the Blue Jays while in New York. Yeah, he's also pitched for the Angels this season against the Blue Jays. He had a couple appearances, three innings, and five strikeouts against the Jays. No runs. Bounce foul by Montero. Blue Jays had a big inning in the bottom of the third when they scored three runs on four hits. Top of the order. Getting things going. Carrera singled. Martin singled. Smoke had a boop single. And then Morales with a sacrifice five. Good take by Montero. It's two and one. Looks like a changeup that he's trying to get in there. Blue Jays have held off. Fastball slider changeup. It's 
pitched with the Yankees and the Brewers, the Angels organization. The Cubs released him in May of 2015. He's banged around ever since. It's fouled down the left side. This appearance today is 50th of the season. That's a career high. He pitched in 49 games in 2013 with the Cubs. And he's been good. Like I said, he's only been scored on four runs in his last 34 appearances on base average against him, 181. That's going to slice foul into the seats again. Two balls and two strikes. Pierce will return the first. Cut on and missed by Montero. He strikes out. The strikeout for Parker, one away. And I mean, Ryan Goins to the plate. Looks like his split, split change as that one goes right straight down. He gets that ball right in between his index finger and his middle finger and creates that fork ball type of rotation. All the ball goes down to get a strikeout. Well, that's a great textbook block by Maldonado, the catcher. Oh, and one to Goins. Ryan is one for two. Down the right side, foul territory. Now it's there, makes the catch. Goins is retired. Dominic Leone just starting to get loose. Matt Dermody has been throwing. Mike Bolsinger has pitched two and a third. Ben Revere, a left handed hitter, the first batter for the Angels in the seventh, and it might be Dermody's inning. Bottom of the lineup wouldn't be a bad idea if you're going to take your starter out of there. The guy who's in there, Bolsinger, is giving them the most innings today. Pilar fouls off the first pitch. In Boston, the Red Sox have a 3 1 lead over Kansas City, top of the seventh. Pomerantz, the starter, is out of the game. He went six and two thirds, allowed a run on seven hits. Brandon Workman has come into the ballgame. Another foul down the right side. Long run for Robinson, and he runs into the Wall down there. Caleb Cal or, or excuse me, Cole Calhoun, the right fielder, did that early in the game and suffered an injury that popped up a little later in the ball game. He had to leave the game while running the bases and almost made the catch. And Robinson almost made this catch as that ball lands in the stands. It looked like it hit a fan right in the glove, and they dropped it. Kevin Pilar with an 0-2 count. I got That's a note here, Buck, on Blake Parker about how he finished spring training in a, with a flourish. It says here he finished spring training with a streak of 17 consecutive outs recorded via a strikeout. That's how you finish spring training with a flourish. That's how you make a team. <laughs> 
Probably got a lot of them with that splitter. This has popped up and playable. Valbuena makes a catch in foul ground. The Blue Jays get a lead off walk and strand the base runner. We'll go to the seventh inning. The Angels with a five run lead. Jay's Care Foundation is challenging Canadians to help build Toronto's first accessible baseball field, a space specifically designed to meet the unique play needs of children living with physical and cognitive disabilities. To get involved and help give all youth the chance to play ball, visit jayscare.com slash baseball for all. Buck. What a great program that is to help those youngsters get involved in playing baseball as we move to the seventh. The lefty Matt Dermody comes on first scheduled batter is Ben Revere so they call upon Matt Dermody Matt was just recalled five days ago from Buffalo where he was five and one with an ERA 329 this is his third stint with the ball club lefty out of the bullpen throws hard fastball slider he last pitched a couple of days ago he only faced one batter gave up a base hit faced Alonzo I believe it was yonder Alonzo the first baseman of the A's gave up the base hit and that was the only battery faced that afternoon. Ben Revere <laughs> takes strike one. Revere's been on base three times today. Reached on the field of choice, was thrown out stealing in the second, had an RBI single in the third. Reached on a field of choice in the fifth, stole second, went to third on the air by the catcher and scored on the sacrifice. Five, he's been busy. And he's made a couple of nice catches in the outfield today. It's a, a left hander who's going to throw it in there about 94 miles an hour, so you've got to get it started. One hopper, nice play by Goins. He unloads in a hurry, one away. Happy 150th to our home and native land. Honda, proudly driving Canadians since 1973. Blue Jays wrapping up a seven game homestand. They swept the Oakland A's. Four in a row, and the Angels have taken the first two games of this series. Martin Maldonado he is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. Pulls it foul.
Cam Bedrosian loosening up for the Angels. With that sack fly, Maldonado has now matched his career high in RBIs with 30. That was set back in 2012 while he was with Milwaukee. Him up with that inside fastball. Yeah, it's one thing to throw 93 and 94, but you got to be able to put it in a good spot. Blue Jays have tried this whole series throwing that fastball to Maldonado in. Look at all those pitches right there on pitch cast inside. Maybe it'll change up and go away now. Another foul back. This has been the best opportunity for Maldonado to catch. He has played in more games, had more at bats, has scored more runs, has more hits than any other year in his career. And he just matched his career high with the sacrifice fly back in the fifth. He now has driven in 30. Tell you what he doesn't do. He doesn't walk very often. He is close to 300. At bats this year, he's walked just 14 times. His on base percentage is 307. No. Got hit by a pitch. Germany loses Maldonado as he hits him on a 2 2 pitch. Just trying to overthrow that slider like he wanted to bury it inside held on to it just a little bit too long. Second time in this series that Maldonado has been hit slider right off the calf. Remember Maldonado yesterday got hit in the elbow by Roberto soon in the ninth inning. That proved to be. Very important. With one out, Calhoun single, then Maldonado got hit by the pitch. And he was taken out for the pinch runner, and then Ben Revere had an RBI double, sack fly, and the Angels won it late, three runs in the ninth. Caleb Cowart, the second baseman, hits this ball on the ground. Goins to Ref Snyder back to first and they complete the double play. Ref Snyder's got a strong arm. A little bit wide throw at first, but Smoke gave him the good stretch to end the inning.
help celebrate baseball in Canada, Rogers has made 30 baseball dreams come true this July. Today, 13 dream winners, one from every province and territory, were invited to Rogers Centre for an unforgettable Canada Baseball Day experience. See more dreams that came true this summer at rogerscelebrates.com or follow hashtag baseball dreams. Home half of the seventh we go, Buck Martinez and Pat Tabler. Thank you very much, Hazel May. That was a nice ceremony before the game. Those 13 participants, as they realized their baseball dream, stood on the field and carried the flag of their province or territory, representing their hometowns where they came from. New pitcher for the Angels, Cam Bedrosian. Cam pitched here on Friday night, gave up a home run to Justin Smoke in his only outing of this series. Ref Snyder then back to the top of the order Carrera and Martin to follow. <laughs> Rob Ref Snyder has lined into a double play and grounded out to first. Two balls and no strikes. Medrosia. He's been struggling lately and Mike Sosha says that has to be connected to the two months that he missed with the growing strain. He just doesn't have his leverage right now with his leg so he's been wild as he falls behind three and oh. He's healthy he says but he's searching for his leverage his drive on the mound from a physical standpoint. You miss two months in a baseball season it's tough to come back even though you throw just one inning. Very difficult to sit on the sidelines and rehab an injury and then come back get yourself back up to speed. Takes a few extended outings before you really start to get your timing back whether you're a hitter or a pitcher. That's the third straight leadoff walk the Blue Jays have been given here in this ball game. That leadoff walk in the fifth, leadoff walk in the sixth, and now a leadoff walk here in the seventh. They haven't been able to capitalize. That's the problem. They hit into a double play in the fifth inning. And then after the walk last inning, one, two, three, and now another leadoff walk. That'll certainly get the attention of his manager. Been a good day for Ezekiel Carrera, two for three with a home run. The Angels have eight pitchers on the disabled list and they have really had to dig down deep into their organizational depth. The ball bounced right out of the glove of the catcher that should be a pass ball charged to Maldonado if it is it will be his fourth pass ball of the season. The Jays will take that you mentioned eight pitchers on the DL their number one pitchers on the DL. Garrett Richards as let's watch it again Maldonado reaches up for it and hits it off the thumb. Tyler Skaggs is on the DL he's their number three Shoemaker is their number two. And tough to win ball games when the top three guys in your rotation miss significant amounts of time. Alex Meyer young right hander who was throwing the ball very well he's on the deal. Well, it sure. is indeed a pass ball charged to model number. Andrew Heaney they were counting on him to be one of their starters this season. Houston Street is on the disabled list the closer. Nick Tropiano is coming back from Tommy John surgery so he's on the deal as well. Career waves at that breaking ball in the dirt and strikes out for a second time this afternoon. In New York, Tampa Bay holding on to their 4 3 lead, trying to salvage the final game of that four game series. Jake Faria out of the game after just four innings. He walked five in his four innings of work and struck out eight. They've had some tough losses in that series to the Yankees. 
Did you see it the other day where they had two outs in the ninth inning ground ball to the shortstop in the second baseman they didn't know which one was going to take the ball. Ended up tying the score. You know you mentioned the bullpen for the Rays now they have been fortified with the acquisitions today it's been Romo Jennings and C -Shed who has come into the game. So they have made some acquisitions here ahead of the trade deadline to bolster their chances of making it to the postseason. Steve Ciszek had a lot of success with the Marlins. 6 6 right hander. Closer. He closed for the Marlins. Closed for a little bit with Seattle. They're fine for their closer. Colin Mason. Closer. He's got to get the ball to him. One one to Russell Martin. There's a fastball for strike two. Gets a piece of that good breaking ball. It's 9 4 Angels. They had a big five run third inning. Albert Pujols has had a big day, snapping a long over. Pujols with three hits, two home runs. He's driven in four and scored three. Mike Trout continues to wear out the Blue Jays. He's reached base safely in 15 straight games. He's had a couple of hits, a walk this afternoon. Anderson Simmons has extended his personal hit streak to nine straight. Simmons is two for four and a two run double in the third. Playing him up the middle. Coward is there and throws out Martin. On the play, Ref Snyder is going to go to third base. This is a good fielding team, the Los Angeles Angels. They've only committed 50 errors this season. Second in the American League in fielding percentage. Mike Sosha wants you to pitch it and catch it. They had a streak of 14 consecutive airless games earlier in the season. They had a two air game yesterday. But prior to that game yesterday, they had committed just one air in their previous 20 games. They don't kick it around very often. Justin Smoke is one for two, had an RBI single in the third. Goes after the first pitch, may have broken his bat. It's a fly ball to Trout, and that ends the bottom of the seventh. We'll go to the eighth. Nine four Angels.
The more you fly, the more you earn with WestJet Rewards. Redeem WestJet dollars anytime, anywhere with no blackouts. Now that's cool. Join today at WestJet.com slash rewards. Now time for the schedule ahead brought to you by WestJet. Blue Jays will wrap this game up against the Angels and then head to Chicago. Monday, Tuesday night games, Wednesday a day game, an off day on Thursday. Then three straight down in Houston, another off day on Monday before the New York Yankees come to town, a three-game series, and Clint Hurdle and the Pittsburgh Pirates will come in for a three-game weekend series on the next homestand. The big series against the Houston Astros. They are running away with it in the American League West. They're up by 17 games in the West over Seattle. You now Escobar the leadoff man. He's gone one for four this afternoon. Matt Dermody in his second inning of work. Hit Martin Maldonado with one out, but then got Caleb Coward to hit into a double play. One and two. Lined into center field. Pilar is there. Escobar is retired. One away in the eighth. We want to remind you there's more baseball right here on Sportsnet. The Mets in Seattle. They'll tee it off right after this ball game. The Mets won on Friday night. The Mariners won Saturday 3 to 2. And the Canadian James Paxson will go to the mound. Paxson is four and two thirds innings shy of qualifying for the ERA title. His ERA currently at 284 would be second at best in the American League to Chris Sale. So he's got a chance to qualify for that and get himself into the leaderboard in the ERA title. The Mariners have won 10 of their last 16 games and the bullpen has really thrown the ball well for Seattle of late. Paxton 10 and 3. He spent a lot of time on the disabled list too. Yeah he's done a nice job. Oof. Blue Jays haven't faced him this year. I don't believe. David Hernandez loosening up for the Angels. Mike Trout checks his swing. It's 3 0 to the center fielder. Trout now has 10 multi hit games against the Blue Jays in his last 14 games against Toronto. Two for three, an intentional walk, a couple of runs. Four pitch walk to Mike Trump. Second time he's walked this afternoon. Mike Trump missed six weeks with a thumb injury, but if you look at his career and break down his success over the course of 162 game season, that his numbers are pretty consistent and impressive. <laughs> 35 and 100 and what? Okay, that, that's number one. He's also a 300 hitter. But he has speed too. 29 stolen bases. This is what he averages over his first six years in the big leagues. Pujols hits it to Mark. Second for one, back to first double play. That ties the all-time record for grounding in the double plays with Cal Ripken. 350 times Pujols has grounded into a double play. Time now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell with Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
Beautiful afternoon here at Rogers Center on this Canada Baseball Day. It's all presented by Rogers, and as Jamie Campbell mentioned, James Paxson will start for the Mariners against the Mets after this ball game. David Hernandez comes out of the bullpen to make his 38th appearance of the season, second of the series for Hernandez. Yeah, he threw two thirds of an inning on Friday night. He allowed an inherited runner to score. Hernandez has been around. He's been a starter early in his career when he was with Baltimore. He's transitioned into the bullpen. Throws plenty of strikes. Kenris Morales is 0 for 10 against his former team in this series. He had a sacrifice fly in the third inning. He struck out in the first. He has also struck out five times in the three games. Ah! One and one. Hernandez, as Pat mentioned, two thirds of an inning Friday night. He had his longest outing of the year Tuesday, matched his longest outing at Cleveland, two scoreless innings pitched. He was up his first win last Sunday against Tampa Bay. He was traded to the Angels when the Blue Jays were out there earlier today or this season. Back at the end of April, he was pitching in Atlanta. And got traded, had to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, catch a flight all the way out to Los Angeles for that series finale against the Blue Jays. He loves just being at the ballpark. Did not his debut that day. Yeah, against, against the, the Blue Jays. Steve Pierce, the left fielder, had a double in the third. Blue Jays four runs on seven hits. The Angels nine runs on 13 hits. And once again, the tandem of Mike Trout and Albert Pujols have combined for five of the 13 hits. Terrific one two punch for the Angels, especially against the Blue Jays. Here's it's a fly ball to right. Shane Robinson is there. Two quick outs for Hernandez here in the eighth. I, I like the way you put that earlier about Pujols. Pujols was Mike Trout early in his career, which is true. When, when Albert's first five seasons in the big league, a lot like what Trout is doing now in his career without the stolen bases. Yeah, and you know what? And everybody thinks of Albert Pujols' career winding down. He's 37 years old, but when he was 21, when he first came up with the Cardinals, he was Mike Trout. He did all those things that Trout can do. Like you say, he wasn't as fast as Trout, but he could certainly put up the offensive Ooh. numbers. Numbers all the way around. How does he last till the 13th round? That's what I want to know if you're out of Pujols. Just like how does Mike Trout last to the 25th pick in the first round? He played junior college ball in Independence, Missouri. As he. Ooh. Obviously, he was born in the Dominican Republic, but he went to high school in Kansas City and at the junior college and under the radar, not a real hotbed of baseball there. So he had to be able to hit, but probably didn't think he could be an everyday player in the major leagues. Well, he turned out to be a Hall of Famer. Miguel Montero went for three so far. This is a fly ball to left. Ben Revere backing up. He's there, and David Hernandez has a one, two, three. Inning in the eighth will go to the ninth. The Angels looking to sweep the Blue Jays in this three game series.
Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Versatach. Meet our ultimate yard work companion with up to seven interchangeable attachments. It is Canada Baseball Day here at the West Jeff Fight Deck has brought out some of the memorabilia from the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, including the two World Series trophies for the Blue Jays. Larry Walker is a big part of that display. Larry Walker from Maple Ridge, B.C. made his debut in 1989. And he came up with the Expos. Got a hit in his first game. There have been some great players from Canada recently over the years. Fergie Jenkins, I think, is still the greatest. You think Larry Walker's number two? Yeah, I think Larry Walker's number two. Fergie yeah. Jenkins, a sort of Hall of Fame pitcher and a terrific ambassador for baseball in Canada. It's a big 1A, if you will. I mean, you got Larry Walker, Justin Morneau, Joey Votto before he's his career's over. He's going to be up there as one of the greatest players ever produced. From Canada. Larry Walker won three batting titles. He was a terrific player. MVP in 97, won a gold glove. Terrific outfielder. He won a gold glove that year, of course. He is a multiple gold glove winner. He won seven gold gloves, a five time All Star, three batting titles, and three Silver Slugger awards. Not bad. Not bad. That's off Martin's glove. Shane Robinson has another base hit. Robinson didn't come into the game until the third inning as a pinch runner. Is that a couple of hits? Scored a run. I don't want to slight anybody, you know, picking the best players. This guy right here, Russell Martin's high on my list from players that were produced from Canada. Almost comes up with a sensational play at third base. It's just off of his glove. Russell. A four time all star himself. Won a gold glove, won a silver slugger award. Russell's in his 12th season. He's playing in his 1501st game today. A terrific player for sure. Martin had a base hit in the third inning. This has popped up. Smoke's got a play. He makes the catch. Andrew Simmons is returned. First base is number 18. On the left, Brooks Pounders. On the right, Bud Norris. Norris is the closer for the Angels. There are no left-handers in the Angels bullpen. Luis Valbuena. The first baseman. Runner is going. Throw to second is off Bowen's glove, and that's going to be another error charge to Montero. He made an error on a throw to second in the fifth inning when Revere was stealing second. So, third error of the afternoon for the Blue Jays. It's nine to four. Mike Sosha knows that the Blue Jays have got some big bats sitting on that bench over there, so no lead is safe. So he sends the runner, picks up another stolen base, and another runner goes to third base on the air. Infield has to come in. Luis Valbuena had a base hit to center field. In the second inning, high fly that's headed for the seats down the right field line, and it will drop out of play. Now, Queen has had a good month of July with the bat, at least in the power categories. He's at six home runs this month. He's looking to hook something deep enough to get that run in. Started for the first time today with the two left handers Happ and Liriano starting the first two games of this series. 2 1. That ball is deep to right. Tagging at third is Robinson. He will tag and score as well. Winner. 
picks up the RBI. So again the Angels show you how they can manufacture runs. An infield he hit a stolen base and air by the catcher and a sacrifice fly. It's the same formula they used in the fifth inning. Matt Dermody in his third inning of relief. That's allowed just one hit. That was the base hit by Robinson leading off this inning. 10 4 Angels. The Blue Jays have not fared well in their last three home Sundays on getaway day. They lost 19 to 1 to Houston, 15 to 1 to Baltimore or Boston, and now they're trailing 10 to 4. Smoke will flip to Dermody as Revere's retired, and that ends the inning, but the Angels get another run in the top of the ninth. They're in line for the sweep of the three game series. Matt Barnes did not record an out in that game in Boston. A big right-hander charged with four runs, three earned runs. He walked none, but he gave up three hits. And that bullpen continues to be a problem for the Red Sox. They need to go get a setup man in front of Kimbrell. Talking about big right-handers, here's one: six foot five, 265 Brooks Pounders, 11th game for Pounders this year. He's one and zero with a 784 earned run average. A former third round draft pick of the Pirates His father Brant Pounders played in the Padres system in the 1980s fastball slider. That's what you're basically going to get from the big right hander. Recall from Triple A on Wednesday. He allowed two earned runs Wednesday night in two thirds of an inning. He works to the bottom third of this. Blue Jays batting order. Ball on a strike to Ryan Goins. Goins one for three. He's got a nice little smooth easy delivery that helps him keep the ball. In the strike zone. Downstairs, two and one to Goins. Now it's three and one. The Blue Jays have leadoff walks in the fifth, 
sixth and seventh. They couldn't score a run. Just a smoke hit into a double play after the leadoff walk. And Morales fly out. Blake Parker walked the leadoff man, but got the next three in the six. And then Cam Bedrosian, he walked the leadoff man, and then gets the next three in the seventh. David Hernandez had a clean inning in the eighth. One, two, three, retire numbers pounders. Smoke picked up an RBI, his 70th of the season. Bautista got the day off, as did Josh Donaldson. It's been three sacrifice flies in this ball game. Two by the Angels, one by the Blue Jays. Also, Martin played at third. Russell Martin's base hit in the third inning was his 1300th 1300th career hit. Owens, a leadoff walk. So the Blue Jays have had a leadoff walk in four of the last five innings. But they can't get anything going behind that. They haven't had a hit since the third inning. The last hit, double by Steve Pierce. Kevin Pilar. You know it's odd about those those walks that you were just talking about lead off walks. The Angels bullpen have the best walks per nine innings. They walk the fewest batters per nine innings in the American League when it comes to relievers. Today they've walked three. <laughs> one and one to Kevin Pilar. They're keeping everything away from Pilar. That was a breaking ball right on the outside corner. Probably a strike. Shoot a couple of balls to right field and they'll change their approach. You'll get that 40% of the time that slider that we just saw down it away from Pounders. He left that one inside and Pilar hammers it out of here. Home run, Kevin Pilar. Sat back on that breaking ball and delivers the two run home run, his 12th of the season. That's how you hit a hanging breaking ball. He saw it outside, was able to foul it off, and then got a hanger over the middle of the plate. Pounders has only thrown this season an inning and a third against the Blue Jays. They before this one five hits and four earned runs. They've hit 556 against them. We're going to add to that because of the home run by Pilar. That's the 12th home run of the season. That ties Pilar's career high set back in 2015. That's a hanger that stayed right in the middle. Kevin's eyes lit up when he saw that one. He hit that ball a long way. 10-6 ball game. Mike Sosha has the bullpen up and throwing again. Nobody out. Number nine hitter Rob Refschneider. It's a good cut. Fouls it back. Refschneider is over two with a walk. But Norris, the closer, back up again. He was up last inning. Got to give the credit to the Angels for the add on runs in the fifth, sixth, and ninth. It's made the difference in this ballgame. A couple of those runs on speed. Ben Revere creating the one run by himself. 
And then Robinson created that last run in the top of the city. Nevere in the fifth, Robinson here in the ninth. Two and one. That's a foot and down into the corner. Ruff Snyder has just hit a ground rule double. Rob Ruff Snyder gets his first hit as a Blue Jay. Well, the Blue Jays continue to hit. Pounders. Brooks Pounders is not going to get an out here in the ninth inning. Mike Sosha has got to go to his closer. Four run lead. Rob Ref Snyder, his reputation is he can hit and he turns on that fastball, rips it over the wall on one bounce. Blue Jays. Three straight batters reaching. They turn the lineup over, and Mike Sosha has got to go to the pen again. But Norris pitched yesterday and he closed it out, but it was a shaky ninth inning. Has picked up his 16th save of the season yesterday afternoon, but he had a couple of walks in the inning. He committed an error himself in a 6 5 win, but he got a double play off the bat of Jose Bautista to end the game. 44th game of the season for Norris. That's a career high. 16 for 18 in saves. He picked up a save yesterday with that scoreless inning of relief. Created some problems with the walks and the errors. It ended up picking it up and the Blue Jays have turned over their lineup and remember if it goes deep enough they've got Donaldson and Bautista sitting on that bench they need them. Ezekiel Carrera is two for four. Ref Snyder takes his lead at second. Nobody out. Drive in the center. That's going to get down for a base hit. Ref Snyder will stop at third. Rob had to make sure it was down safely in front of Trout. Pereira picks up his third hit of the afternoon. Blue Jays have done some of their best work on this homestand in the ninth inning, and they're doing it again. What a afternoon for Ezekiel Pereira. He's not wasted any time. He gets the first pitch fastball from Morris. Bangs it into center field. That's four straight batters have reached base. Things getting a little interesting here. Russell Martin. He has a hit in three at bats and he's also walked. If you're Mike Sosha and you're 
manager of the Angels, the guy you're looking at is the guy on deck. He represents the tying run if Russell Martin can get on. The other guys don't mean anything. Carrera at first, Ref Snyder at third base. The Blue Jays have now hit 24 home runs in the ninth inning or later. Made some majors. Need base runners now. And you know Russell's going to be grinding right here. He knows that the tying run is their best home run hitter sitting behind him. His job, get on base. Two and oh. Takes a strike. Two and one now. It's two and two. Neither Jose Bautista nor Josh Donaldson started in this game, so their bats are available. Sure, they've been up there getting loose, taking some flips, hitting down in the cage, whatever it takes. They're giving Carrera second base. They're not even holding him on over there at first base. He's got a big lead. Two and two to Martin. There he goes. Martin hits it on the ground. That is going to be an infield hit for Russell Martin. Still nobody out. And by sending that runner, the only play for Simmons, the shortstop, was over at first base, and Russell's going to beat it out. They don't start that runner at first base. It's an easy throw and they'll get that lead runner. So a heads up play. They're not holding them on. Go ahead and take off. Carrera did. Yeah, they weren't even holding them on. Simmons, all he can do is try that jump throw. That's not going to work. So now the Martin RBI single has brought Justin Smoke to the plate representing the tying run. Smokes had a great homestand. Eight for 24 with two home runs. Smoke one here indeed. Mm. Oh, he got a pitch to hit. Breaking ball up out over the plate. That's going to bring the catcher out to talk to Bud Norris. Hey, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Four for eight in his career versus North. Again, those add-on runs by the Angels in the fifth, sixth, and ninth are huge. And they were manufactured runs. The home run, of course, in the sixth by Pujols, his second was the exception. Pilar with a two run home run here in the inning. His 12th tying his career high. Oh, and one to smoke. Chased a nasty breaking ball in the dirt. That's what you're going to get from Bud Norris. Fastball overhand, curveball. Ball right side. Uh, Buena flips to Norris, who steps on the bag. One out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much, Jamie Campbell, indeed. An interesting day for him. He's a Hall of Famer in waiting. He reaches that terrific hit plateau, 3,000 career hits. Congratulations to Adrian Beltre. He'll be there. He'll be in the Hall of Fame five years after he retires. Congratulations. This one's not over yet. Another home run threat at the plate, and wouldn't it be nice against your former team to do something special? Henris Morales has hit four home runs in the ninth inning. He has 20 on the season. In this series, he's 0 for 11. He had a sacrifice fly in the third. 0 for 11 with five strikeouts. Four ninth inning home runs for Morales. Morales is at his best when he stays in the big yeah. part of the field. Yeah, that's where one of his home runs went to dead center field. Two of those home runs in the ninth inning were walk off jobs right here. Norris is going to stay away from him. Morales with a two homer game on Thursday night. The second home run in the ninth inning. Home run cut on a hanging breaking ball. He recognized that pitch out of his hand right away and missed it. One ball, one strike. Tough pitch to lay off of. Third ball in the dirt. Two and one now. Carreras at third with his third hit of the afternoon. Russell Martin, he's had a pair of hits. His RBI single. He is now at second. Morales, two for eight. With a home run against Norris. 46,852. 14th cent out of the season. Season for Norris as a closer. He got his first save against the Blue Jays back in April. And he's got 16 of them. There's Steve Pierce who won a game for the Blue Jays on a walk off. I think if you're Bud Norris, I don't think you want to give him anything good to hit here. You also don't want to put him on base because then he would represent the tying run. Sinking fastball down and away. It's now a full count. Carrera, three hits today. Russell Martin's got a pair of hits. Kendris Morales, 0 for 3 to this point. Pass Donaldson standing by, ready in the dugout. In Bautista available. Fastball foul back. Lots of thunder on the Blue Jays bench. Another 3 2 pitch. He locked it. 
Perez walks. That'll load the bases, and Steve Pierce has seen this show before. Thursday, Steve Pierce with the bases loaded in the 10th inning hits a 3 2 pitch off Liam Hendricks, a walk off grand slam home run. And how did they get there? Hendricks walked the bases loaded. Went to three and two on the count to Pierce and Steve got an inside fastball turned on it leaned it down the left field line for the walk off grand slam. Can he do it two times in one week. Henry's Morales. It's a pivotal walk as Darwin Barney takes over as a pinch runner at first Barney represents the tying run. Pierce comes to the plate representing the winning run. The Blue Jays had back to back walk off home runs Wednesday and Thursday first time in franchise history. They had walk off home runs in consecutive games. And it was the walk who's played a big part in this sitting again remember the leadoff walk to go to start the sitting. Then the two run home run by. Pilar double single infield hit and then another walk has set the stage for Steve Pierce. Steve Pierce's grand slam was his first to walk off home run. Ball one. Three runs in this inning. The Angels lead it 10 to 7. Yesterday's game by Bud Norris that sets the stage for the Blue Jays and a chance to win. He walked a couple of bat batters and then had an error. He's already walked one, given up a couple of hits. Pierce just missed a home run earlier this game. Hit the ball off the center field wall. No, 
can't handle the celebration, don't do anything good. Right? Absolutely. So I have a feeling you're going to have a lot of that. Tell me about your approach late in ball games, particularly when the game's on the line, Steve. Uh, just looking for something to hit. Uh, you know, he was struggling there that inning, uh, struggling with strikes, so he missed twice with a couple sliders, so I got to sit dead red. This ball club has come from behind twice against the Oakland Athletics, and today, what does it say about this group of guys? Resilient. You know, we've been behind the eight ball almost all year, but we're going to keep fighting. I can tell you that right now. All right, Steve Pierce, I have a pretty good dry cleaner. Uh, you put Canada Baseball Day on the map, and you let the fans go home happy. Steve Pierce, everybody, right on. What a finish to the homestand. Seven runs in the ninth, the largest comeback in franchise history after trailing after eight. Here's Jamie and Greg.